Hey, Buff Nation, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. You're coming up with the Buffalo Stampede. We talk with assistant men's basketball coach Rick Ray, men's basketball player Deshaun Schwartz. We also get a little analysis with my broadcast partner, Scott Wilkie, and we talk postseason bowl with football signing and also Pac-12 honors. That's all coming up with the Buffalo Stampede. Touchdown! Touchdown, Colorado! And the Buffaloes find the end zone! How about that? Beautiful shot for the Colorado can celebrate. Here comes Ralphie and your Colorado Buffaloes. I should take it. Maya's good from out top. Let me hear you, Buff fans. She's going to fire the shot. Goal, Buffaloes. Holy cow! What a play by Colorado. And for three, they made a pay. Batty, beautiful, beautiful pass. Under Evan Batty unselfishly finds Walton. Understanding your role, every pick and roll. That's a big play by the big man. Dallas Walton gets a dunk. Uh, double digits for Dallas. Buffalo's improved to 4-1 and one as they knock off Omaha by 42 points here at the event center. Hi, everybody. Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. Assistant coach Rick Rain, his first season with the Buffalo's uh, joining us. You got a little connection to that Omaha program, right? Yeah, I actually got my master's degree from there when I was a graduate assistant for uh, Kevin Lehman. Okay. Um, right before I went over to Indiana State. So right. uh, I've known Darren for a long time there. It's really at that GA spot there at Omaha. You had a lot of good coaches. Chris Crutchfield came through there. Tony Stubblefield was over at Oregon. Nice. Um, so we had a lot of good assistant coaches and GAs come through there. All right. So we're giving Hugh all the credit for this victory then, right? <laughs> no, no. For that kind of insult. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Buffs get a nice win here. Really a couple of lopsided victories. One over Northern Colorado and this one here. Give us a thought on how Colorado's playing right now, coming back from Tennessee and getting these two victories. Well, I think the number one thing is, like, Tennessee kind of opened up our eyes to what we need to improve on. Sure. And so I think that was really beneficial for our guys because sometimes they can start thinking they're a little bit better than what they are with some of the victories. And now you play against a team like Tennessee, not just because they're a really good basketball team, but they're a tough, physical, hard-nosed team. And now those guys understand, especially our incoming guys, our freshmen, and what they need to improve on in order to be elite. Rick, the defensive numbers right now are impressive for Colorado. Is this, and maybe it's too early to tell this definitively, is this a good defensive team that we've got right now? I really think so because I think first thing is it starts with Eli and McKinley with the mm -hmm. ball pressure they put on opposing teams point guards. We can wear those guys down by picking them up 94 feet. And so for us, the point guards being able to do that and bother the other team's point guard really starts and ignites our defense. And then I just think we have so much length. Yeah. Um, with Dallas coming in and uh, coming to the game and making things plays, and Jabari is so long, Tristan is so long, and then you got younger guys that come in and make plays. So I think with our length and our willingness to guard, I think it makes a difference. You mentions Dallas Walton and the length for the seven footer. We heard from Dallas after the victory over the Mavericks. I, I, I'm grateful for every moment, every opportunity I get to step on this floor. Uh, I've been on the other side where, um, where I haven't been able to play, I've had to watch. And so, I mean, I mean, uh, no matter who we're playing, uh, no matter what opportunity I have, uh, I'm out here and just, just enjoying myself, man. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's something I've always uh, known I'm capable of doing. Uh, Ken and I, uh, especially since I've been back playing now, we've been working on our pick and roll game and working on uh, connecting on uh, connecting on opportunities like that because I know how, how good of a player Ken is. And uh, I know that once uh, I can get him going, then, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's over. I mean, uh, uh, there's a lot of things that he can do and uh, just, just making sure that I'm opening up opportunities for him on the floor. There's a lot of experience in our front court from Ev to, to Jariah uh, to myself. I mean, and even even Barry tonight, I mean, he he's a hooper. He's a young bull, man. I mean, so, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited. Our front court is uh, is very solid and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how, how we're holding against Pac-12 play. But uh, uh, I think it's something that uh, all the other teams had to address whenever they're playing us, and um, uh, I think it's something that we're looking to, to continue building on as we progress through the season. Dallas Walton after the ball game as the Buffaloes get the victory uh, by 42 points over the Mavericks. We continue with assistant coach uh, Rick Ray. Now, I asked you about the defensive side. What, what do you see from Colorado on the offensive side? 
to refine games? Well, I think the first thing is your willingness to share the basketball. We've mm -hmm. got to be unselfish. We have so many playmakers. Obviously, McKinley starts with him as a guy that can make plays, but he's also willing to make plays for others. And so for us, we want to make quick decisions and get the ball moving through the air. And I think sometimes, especially high school guys where they're coming from, where I can get the ball and kind of do whatever I want, now you're at a different level. You need to be able to move the ball first and move people and then get the opportunity to break the defense down. I think our guys are starting to realize that. You know, when you got a senior point guard like McKinley, of course, that sets everything up, like having a quarterback out there in a football field. But, boy, Rick, these last couple of ball games, getting those young guys some minutes and maybe helping kind of speed up that learning curve, awful important because of what the schedule looks like from here on out. Yeah, and for our veterans, we always say it's their fault if the young guys don't play. Okay. Um, so if they don't go out and do what they're supposed to do, those young guys never get in. So we got to make sure that we come in there and we're locked in and focused and not looking down on an opponent like an Omaha. Sure. Jabari Walker, one of the young fellows we're talking about, he's a unique player, isn't he? I mean, he's really – his upside is really going to be special when it's all said and done. Yeah, you get upset at him during the game because he's making so many mistakes, and then you get done, you look at the box score, he's got 15-9. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I just think that he's a guy that's so productive. He knows how to play, and he's just start, starting to figure it out. And when he gets bigger and stronger, he's really going to be a problem. Well, the Buffalo News improved to 4-1. and one. Rick Ray, congratulations. Good luck in Vegas. Thank you very much. All right, assistant coach for the Buffaloes. As we take a timeout, coming up next, we're going to continue talking basketball. One of the seniors, Deshaun Schwartz, after the break. Wines, Colorado in the white, and it is Schwartz with McKinley right. Finds Deshaun Schwartz, and that move, but the ball wouldn't stick. Schwartz down the lane, and a shot. Schwartz all the way to the lane, Deshaun Schwartz. That was great to see Deshaun Schwartz hit some early buckets for the Buffaloes as they improved to 4-1 and, and get the 42-point victory over Omaha at the event center. Hi, everybody. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Deshaun Schwartz joining us. Nice to get that, that victory. You guys are playing some pretty good basketball. It was great seeing you getting off early in this one. Yeah, it felt good. Got the, the lid off the bucket pretty early. Got some early ones in and... Got some confidence going. You know, it took you a while to kind of kind of find yourself. You missed the first couple of ball games. You got hit with COVID, missed those first two ball games in uh, in Manhattan, Kansas. Did you come back and feel like you're a little rusty? Yeah, for sure. I, I don't think I've ever went 10 days without touching a basketball in I my bet. whole life. So um, it just feels good to be back out there. So I'm excited about that. This has been such a crazy ride. And I, I think about you and I and the rest of this team being in Las Vegas back in March. Can you imagine? At that point, where we are right now and all you guys have had to go through? Yeah, it's nuts. It's, it's crazy. It's unfortunate. And, um, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm glad to be playing, whether that's uh, with nobody in the crowd or just whatever we got to do. I'm just happy to be playing. Give us an assessment of this team through five games now. What, what, what are you seeing from this group that you like? I think we're just growing. Um, that's the main thing, you know, steadily improving every game. We got a, a big-time player leading the pack with in McKinley Wright. Uh, great big man, great wings, and, you know, I think we're going to be a great team moving forward. Through five games, the Buffaloes defensively are pretty impressive. Top 10 in scoring defense, top 16, 17, something like that, field goal defense. With the length and athleticism you guys have got in this team, could, could this be the best defensive team you've been on so far here at CU? I think it could be. Um, we, we really go at each other in practice, and I think that's where it starts. Um, we, we've gained some some key guys in the, in the freshmen and transfers that we've gotten, and they help us on the defensive end as well. So it's been great for, for those new guys to come in and really help our core group. You mentioned having Ken out there, and, and by the time it's all said and done, he's going to end up the, the number one assist man, surpassing Jay Humphreys here at CU when it's all said and done. Deshaun, you, we've talked about this before. When you got a guy like McKinley on your team, and you're coming down the court, and you're, you're on the break, and you're hitting the wing, it's just you know be ready at all times, right? Because no matter where you're at, he's going to put the ball in a position where you can score. Yeah, he, he's an all-time great in CU, so just playing with him has been a pleasure and it's, it's been amazing just being able to grow up with him over these four years. Yeah, the Buffaloes get the victory, 4-1 of the season. Afterward, we heard from head coach Tad Boyle. Yeah, I thought, you know, it was a good win and uh, beat a quality team. I think Northern Colorado, when they get in league play in the big sky, they're going to they're gonna win a lot of games. They've got some, some good players. And, you know, they're still finding themselves a little bit, but um, I thought we were really efficient tonight. Um, both offensively, you know, we shot over 
percent. We haven't done that, I don't think, you know, all year. Defensively, I thought we we did a good job uh, with our ball screen coverages because Northern Colorado is a good ball screen team. They're a good driving team. They're a good three point shooting team, and I thought we did a really good job defensively against them. And they, they create some problems. Bodie Hume is a, is a is a good player. I thought we did a pretty good job on him tonight. Uh, overall, an efficient game. I thought McKinley was terrific. You know, he had, he had seven assists, one turnover, and uh, you know our two starting post guys which we've tried to establish them, you know, at the beginning of every game, South Dakota, K-State, and Tennessee. Uh, but tonight, to have them be 9 for 13 combined, uh, when that happens, we're going to be good offensively because we got some guys that can stretch the defense and, and make shots. And I thought everybody that played, you know, had some really good things that we can build upon. And um, I'm, overall, I'm pretty pleased. There's the head coach of the Buffalo. He's got two lops out of the fairs now as they knocked off Northern Colorado and then, of course, uh, Omaha here at the event center as we continue with uh, Deshaun Schwartz. You know, I asked this of Dallas in the postgame radio show the other day about uh, this, this weird offseason, how you get prepared for a season when you really couldn't get together. Uh, gyms are closed, so there were times you really couldn't even do, go out and do much in terms of getting yourself ready. How, what was your preparation like for this season? Yeah, it was a little bit different. Um, a lot of time at the park. Um, which is very unusual. A little old school, like you were a kid again? Right, yeah. yeah. You know, I haven't done that in a long time. So, I mean, that was different. But at least just having the ball and, and the rim at the end of the day, that's good to be around. Yeah. What What was it that, you know, you guys always get together with Tad after a season. What was it that Tad said to you about your senior year, about what you need to get better at? What was he telling you? Um, you know, just a lot of stuff about the mental aspect of basketball, um, just playing with confidence, being more aggressive, you know, things of that nature. Yeah. So the Buffaloes now head to Las Vegas to take on Washington on Sunday night. Uh, that'll be an interesting matchup, non-conference affair. The, the way this team is made up, do you like how it's built for jumping into conference play? Yeah, no doubt. Um, I think we should have a lot of confidence going into conference play. Um, we have some games under our belt, and obviously we've played together for a while, so um, there's not a team that we feel that we can't handle in the league. Now that you're one of the old guys on this team, uh, an old man senior getting gray in the temples up there, what do you think about these newcomers on this squad, all these freshmen? Whew. Yeah, these boys are special. Um, yeah. I'm really excited to not only play with them but watch them grow um, over their careers as well. You know, I got – a guy from my hometown uh, playing for them. That's right, that's, Nick. That's awesome to see. And then Jabari Walker, he's special. Luke, Tristan, all these guys are going to be good. Do you look, as part of being a veteran player now, is, is being a teacher a little bit and guiding these, these fellas somewhat? Yeah, it's funny because I, I feel myself leading the way in the same way that George and Dom led me. Sure. And telling the same stories. Like, it, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just a link in the chain. It's, it's amazing how quickly it goes by. Now you're all of a sudden a veteran. Seriously. Well, congratulations. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it. All right. Deshaun Schwartz, he and the Buffaloes improved to 4-1 and one with a lopsided 42-point win over <laughs> Omaha. Now they take the show on the road as they head to Las Vegas. We're back in a stampede in a moment. Love pass on the left block taken by Dallas. Spins inside. Hook shot over top of Zorn. Is up and good. And Dallas has got eight points, and he continues his re by 20. High post at the foul line. Nice catch. Firing from 14, and Dallas... Knocks it down. He's got 10 points already. Grab left on the left side to Eli. Get it back to Dallas. Drives all the way to the hoop with the right hand, and it's up and good. Knifing play that time by Dallas Walton. He's got 14. There's a highlight for the Buffs. Victory over the Washington Huskies, a non-conference game in Las Vegas. First to two, in fact, in Vegas. Buffaloes come home unblemished from T-Mobile Arena. Win by 23 over Washington, and then a 10-point victory over the Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Hi, everybody. Scott Wilkie, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Buffs wrap up non-conference play, Scotty, at 6-1. and one. Let's go back to that game with Washington a little bit. That was a dominating contest for a non-conference slate, and the Buffaloes were very impressive on both ends of the court. Yeah, other than the last five minutes when it got a little sloppy in that ball game, Buffs played excellent defense. Really uh, dominated the Washington Huskies more than I've never seen them before. Yeah, there's some issues there with Washington. Colorado exposed some of those issues right there. And then, of course, they come back and get the 10-point win over Grand Canyon University. And that, I would have to say, in non-conference play, is the most impressive win they've got so far this year. Yeah, I would say that that's the second best team we've played this year outside of Tennessee. And that's saying something. When we played K-State of the Big 12, we yeah. played Washington of the Pac-12. But Grand Canyon's a very good team, and we had to play a good ball game, especially in the second half, to win that game. As I mentioned, Colorado six and one, wrapping up non-conference play. I don't, I don't think if you know the game of basketball, 
I don't think you're terribly worried about Colorado. It's a pretty good basketball team Tan's got. They're, they're a well-rounded team, very good defensively, and can have six or seven guys get double figures on any given night, which is unusual for the Buffs. Usually it's three or four guys. Yeah. Now you got six or seven guys that can give you double figures or even score 20 points in a given game. Okay, I'm not going to break any news here. McKinley Wright is a very good player. Scotty, he's gotten better as a shooter, and the way he picks and chooses right now, when to exert himself, when not to, didn't have to do much against Washington because everybody was scoring. Things were going well. But then go to the second half late, especially against the Antelopes, when the Buffs really needed something, both offensively and defensively. He really took over. It's really impressive the way he's able to do that. Yeah, the Antelopes tonight cut it to one. Buffs called the timeout. And after that timeout, McKin it was all McKinley Wright. Uh, both ends of the floor. He switched on to their best player, uh, the point guard. Now Blackshire. Uh, Blackshire shut him down and offensively took over the game for the Buffs. Yeah, uh, it's, I'm hard pressed to say there's a better point guard in America than McKinley Wright. Other guys in this team we don't talk nearly enough about, I think. Eli Parquet has interestingly really become a, a really fascinating player for me with Colorado. He's become a defensive stopper. He's become a very good rebounding uh, position player at the guard position. And he's there, you know, he can do things on the offensive end as well that, that are are awful impressive. Yeah, and you know, as good as McKinley is defensively, you don't always want him guarding the best player because he can get in foul trouble or can kind of wear him down. It's nice to have a guy like that can do the bulk of it, and then McKinley can kind of come yeah. in late in the game and kind of be the closer. Um, Eli Parquet, very big for a guard too. You know, yeah. we don't talk six about, four, 195 pounds. You know, and 195 pounds, he can guard a big guy, switch onto a big guy. Very versatile in the guard position. You know, I'm not sure you're going to get consistent productivity on a high level game in and game out from both Evan Batty and Dallas Walton. But as a tandem out there, Dallas against Washington had 22 points. Evans, the guy at 16 uh, against Grand Canyon U. They're a nice tandem because game in and game out, one of the two of you feels like it's going to have a good game. Yeah, and you know, uh, the the offensive game is going to come and go a little bit for Dallas. You know, tonight he wasn't really involved that much offensively. Foul trouble got him off the floor. But uh, Evan, not only on the offensive end, but defensively fronting the post, yeah. creating some turnovers tonight. And that was part of why Grand Canyon ended up with 17 turnovers. Yeah, Evan Batty, really an underrated defensive player, I think. He does a lot of things very, very well. You feel good about this team heading into conference play? I do very good. Uh, you know, the first half against Tennessee wasn't, you know, what we like to see, but still they had a close game again on the road against a quality opponent, top yep. 12 team, um, without their best game. So I feel really good. Defensively is going to keep them in games on most nights. Offense is going to have to be something that wins them, but defense is going to keep them in any game. Yeah, they are the best, by the way, free throw shooting team in America. We saw that against Grand Canyon U. Shot 86%. That's their season average right now. You shoot those kind of numbers, and they get to the foul line a lot. They're averaging about 20 attempts a game. Yeah, and tonight you saw Grand Canyon didn't even want to foul. Yeah. You know, and usually in a game like that was fairly close. They would foul, put them on the line. They didn't do that tonight, which is unusual. No, Colorado Buffalo is impressive at 6-1 and one as they wrap up non-conference play. Coming up next here on the Stampede, we're going to talk some football. The Buffs are bowling, and we got awards to talk about as well. That comes your way next. Third down and eight for the 21-yard line. There's his snap to Neuer. Looks, he's going to rifle this one down the right side. In zone! Touchdown! Back one final time at the Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Got a lot of football news to talk about with the Colorado Buffaloes. On December 18th, head coach Carl Durrell put the finishing touches on his first full cycle recruiting class, signing 17 players to national letters of intent. I say first full cycle when he got here late last year. He cobbled together what turned out to be a very good looking class, but had a running start at this one. And despite the odd football season, did a great job keeping some very good players here in the state of Colorado at home, including the highest rated player in that 17 member class. Class, Eric Olson, the outstanding tight end from Littleton, Colorado. Good job by Carl and his recruiting staff putting that class together. Of course, the bus finished up the regular season at 4 1, had that odd happening last weekend where they were left on the outside looking in, not playing in the Pac 12 title game. Oregon ends up beating USC. Buffs left without a dance partner, but that 4 1 record did get them a bowl game as they're heading to the Alamo Bowl for the second time since 2016. They'll renew acquaintances with old Big 8, Big 12 rival the Texas Longhorns on December 29th at 7 o'clock looking forward to the bowl game. Of course, the Pac-12 also handing out some postseason honors and the Buffaloes very well represented. 
That 4-1 record by the Buffaloes got Carl Durrell, the Pac-12 Coach of the Year honor, the second time he has won that award. First time, of course, when he was with UCLA as he led that buff to the 4-1 record and the trip to the Valero Alamo Bowl on December 29th. This is the second time a Colorado coach has won the Pac-12 Coach of the Year award. Of course, Mike McIntyre also got it in 2016. The Buffs had their first winning season since 2016, starting the season at 4-0 for the first time since 2018 and 3-0 in conference play for the first time since 2002. Another big award for the Buffaloes is Jarek Broussard led the Buffs in rushing with 813 total yards on 129 attempts through Colorado's five games, and he was named the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Week three times during the 2020 season, the most of any player over that seven-game regular season, and Jarek Broussard is the Offensive Player of the Year in the Pac-12. On December 5th, the Buffs won 24-13 over Arizona. Broussard ran for 301 yards on 25 carries, the fourth 300-yard rushing game in school history, the first since 2002. We mentioned Carl Durrell being the coach of the year. He might also be the man of the year. I hope you had a chance to see the video this week on Twitter as the head coach and athletic director Rick George made a very special delivery to someone who has, of course, got a dear, dear spot in Buff Nation's heart. There, I had my first win. She says, you know what? It would be really awesome to maybe present a, my first win game ball to you. Oh! So it wasn't my idea. It came from out of her mouth. And I, so I brought it up to my boss, and he thought, oh, my goodness, what a great idea. Is that your first win? Yeah. So, oh, and so, oh, so I wanted believe. you to see that. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to cry. That, oh. oh I'm just, my we're just so fortunate to have you as one of our best fans ever. Oh, my gosh. God bless you all. And you know what this says, don't you? It says, in loving memory of Betty Hoover. Yes. And that was the first win of Coach Durrell's career. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Well, if that didn't bring a tear to your eye, I'm not sure you've got a heart here in the holiday season. What a great gesture by Carl Durrell and Rick George giving that game ball to Peggy Coppum, one of, of course, the great bus fans of all time. Yeah, I got a little misty eye on that one, undoubtedly. Hey, let's talk a little Colorado women's basketball before we wrap things up here. The Buffs opened up Pac-12 Conference play under J.R. Payne with impressive 80-50, to 30-point victory over Utah here at the CU Event Center. Maya Hollingshed with another double-double. That's becoming a game in and game out a stat for her, 10 points and 12 rebounds. Buffs came back then and lost a close one to the number six team in the country to Arizona and then had the game with Arizona State postponed because of COVID issues. And now they've got more home games coming up just after the first. The Buffs will host the Washington schools here at the event center. The CU Men, of course, they're on the road on the 28th. They'll open up Pac-12 conference play against Arizona. As we put a wrap on the Buffalo Stampede this week, I'm voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Happy holidays. We'll talk to you next time. Thank <laughs> you.